What's up guys, Brad Apple here from DailyFanMMA.com, back with another UFC Quick Picks here on the Mayo Media Network. UFC 265 this weekend, Derek Lewis versus Surreal gone for the interim heavyweight title. Should be a really fun slate. Crossing my fingers that we end up with, uh, we got 13 fights on the slate now. Hopefully we still have 13 by fight night. Last weekend was probably one of the craziest uh, UFC weekends that I've ever experienced. Having the Gooden um, Stolze fight canceled mid Saturday, only to be uncanceled a couple hours later. So I'm sorry, guys. I know it was uh, not ideal from your perspective, but I'm giving you four more picks this week. Cash game play, tournament play, salary play, and my fate of the week for UFC 265. As always, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment below who your favorite DraftKings play of the week is. Always appreciate the support. Without further ado, let's get into the slate, and my cash game play of the week is going to be Surreal Gone up at 9.4K. All right, in cash games, <clears throat> I will be rolling with Surreal Gone at 9.4K. He is the main event favorite against Derek Lewis up at minus 360 or so currently. The line's been moving up and down all day. Lewis plus 270 is the underdog. Um, first of all, I, I think Gane is a much better technical fighter than Derek Lewis, and it shows out in the numbers. Gane lands 5.13 significant strikes per minute, only absorbs 2.6 significant strikes per minute with a 63% striking defense. Lewis lands 2.59 significant strikes per minute, absorbs 2.1 at a 44% defense. Derek Lewis is very powerful. We know that he can knock out any man in the world, but unless he knocks Gone out probably early, I do not think he's winning this fight. Gone is a much better fighter at range, controls distance way better. He's even going to be bigger than Lewis, an inch taller than him, a couple inches extra of reach. And he, uh, he has tools at range that Lewis does not. Um, even in Lewis's last matchup against Curtis Blades, he was getting picked apart at range. He landed one big shot in the second round. Impressive knockout, but he landed seven strikes in about six minutes. And Blades had already landed 28, take, uh, 28 significant strikes by that point. Gon's coming off a fight in which he just landed 135 significant strikes against a better technical fighter. In Alexander Volkov, um, either Gon is going to pick... Derek Lewis apart for 25 minutes, or he's going to knock him out. I think he probably wins by knockout. He's plus 105 inside the distance, which is a very good number. Um, of course, Derek Lewis can knock Gone out. I'm not saying that it's an impossible task for him. It's just that's his only path to victory for him. Um, Gone is exceptional defensively, controls range well, probably a better wrestler than Lewis too. So the outcome is just not that high and it's baked into the odds here. Uh, Gone is a very safe play in cash games and in tournaments, 9.4K. I think he can score very well um, in a win, even in a decision win, though he is coming off two decision wins in five round fights where he scored 94 and 85 points. That may not be enough for the optimal lineup in tournaments, and he's going to be extremely popular. So if you do want to be a bit unique, you have the opportunity to pivot off gone in tournaments in favor of fighters who are lower owned, cheaper, and have knockout upside as well. Um, but overall, I think gone is one of the safest plays on the slate. A lot of upside as well, 9.4K heat is my cash gameplay of the week. Moving on to tournaments, I'm going to give out Johnny Munoz at 9.1K. I really like Munoz in this matchup. He is in the opening fight on the card, minus 254 as the favorite currently against Jamie Simmons. And I, th I think he has a lot of grappling upside. I don't perceive Simmons to be a UFC-level fighter. He's 0-1 in the UFC, got knocked out by Giga Chikatse. Don't care too much about that matchup, but he's kind of a wrestling-dependent fighter himself. Um, but he's been knocked out twice in his three losses and submitted once. Doesn't really have much of a functional striking game. I just think that Munoz is a better wrestler, and most importantly, he's a much better submission grappler. So if Munoz, for example, landed a takedown, or sorry, if Simmons, for example, landed a takedown, that wouldn't be so crazy, but I don't think he can do anything with it. Whereas if Munoz lands takedowns, he may just dominate Simmons. He may take the back, he may take mount, land ground and pound, submit him. Um, he has a pretty strong inside the distance line here at plus 115. And the benefit here, I do think he'll be popular. 
but the opening fight on the card, Munoz has only fought once in the UFC and he lost. And he's, and he's in a range with Surreal Gone and Fizayev and Menafield priced right above him. So that's going to put a ceiling on his ownership. Uh, in that UFC debut loss, Munoz actually attempted 16 takedowns. Landed two of them, had a great first round, but slowed down. Um, still impressed me, though, and I just think he's a class ahead of Simmons on the ground. So, of course, nothing is a lock, but Munoz has a ton of wrestling and grappling upside here. Even in a decision win, I think he can rack up enough points with control and takedowns to score well, but also has a chance to finish and hopefully lower ownership than we typically expect for a fighter like this because of the early fight, because he's already lost. Munoz at 9.1K will be my tournament play of the week. Next up, my salary play of the week is going to be Michael Chiesa at 7.7K. He is a slight underdog currently to Vincente Luque. I see him at, well, I see him pushing minus 110 on some books. So this fight's nearing a pick em. So there is some value on Luque at 7.7K. I think he's going to be a popular underdog play, but it's one of those situations where you can't really, unless you really believe Luke is going to win, like really, really believe it, then you should play a lot of Luke. But I'm, I'm unsure. I think Kiesa has, I don't think Kiesa is guaranteed to win, but I certainly think he can. And if he does win, most importantly, we know where the points are going to come from. He is a wrestling and grappling dependent fighter, averages 3.6 takedowns per 15 minutes, a good control grappler, a good submission grappler, and he pretty much sucks as a striker. Lands 1.89 significant strikes per minute. No way he is outstriking Vincente Luque in this matchup. He needs takedowns. He needs control or a submission. And it's no surprise that his wins have scored very, very well because DraftKings re rewards grappling. And in his last four fights, 101, 91, 110, and 103. And those first three numbers all came in decisions. So even in a three-round decision, I think Kiesa can top 90 points, which for 7.7K should be enough. Um, he's nearing to pick him, so there's value on his line. He's plus 300 inside the distance, which isn't great. But like I said, we don't even need a finish from him. I'm just confident that if Kiesa wins, he's going to score very well because his points are going to come from grappling. Luke defense takedowns at 65%. Hasn't been tested a ton on the mat. He's actually a quality submission grappler himself, but was taken down by Nico Price, taken down by Randy Brown, taken down by Derek Krantz, and has some concerns earlier in his career. So, uh, like I said, maybe it is a true 50-50 fight, but I am confident that if Kiesa wins, he's going to score very well, and I am very willing to take chances on him at 7.7K for that reason. Kiesa is going to be my salary play of the week. Finally, my fade of the week, it's going to be Tisha. T nope, just kidding. I'm going to give you Jose Aldo this week as my fade of the week. I, I think, uh, and I was joking around on Twitter about this too, but I think Torres is, is kind of an obvious fade in that range, 8.7K. And th there are other fades on this card. There's, there's um, you know, a few strong plays, but um, there's also a few fighters priced above the mid-range that I don't plan to have a lot of exposure to. The reason that I'm going to talk about Jose Aldo here is because I think he's not as obvious as a fade candidate. Um, I think he's a, a great fighter, a very talented fighter, a, a world champion, but he's going to still carry that, that name value is going to still carry some ownership. And if his name wasn't Jose Aldo, I just don't really think people would be playing him at all in this matchup. Like if his name was Jim Smith or something else, 8.6K. He's only, uh, let's see, he is about a pick em, minus 115 I'm seeing on some books right now against Pedro Muno, so a very slight favorite. He's overpriced at 8.6K, but he simply, he doesn't produce much offense. He only lands uh, 3.45 significant strikes per minute, and he doesn't wrestle. 0 0.5 takedowns for 15 minutes. I don't think he's going to wrestle in this matchup considering Muno's is strong on the mat and has one of the best guillotines in the sport and that 3.45 significant strike volume it's just he's not going to land 150 strikes 120 strikes over 15 minutes his last fight that went 15 minutes he landed 44 strikes and he won because he's very talented and technical but from a DraftKings perspective that's not going to be enough you need a knockout from jose aldo almost certainly for him to have any shot at the optimal lineup at 8.6k 
And because he fights at such a low volume, even if he wins by knockout, he may not end up on the optimal lineup. And I, I, I've kind of said this almost every time he fights, but looking back at the Hinato Moicano uh, matchup, he won by knockout in round two, only scored 80 points. That's not going to get it done at 8.6K. The fight prior to that in 2018... He won by knockout in round one, scored 112 points. So yes, if Jose Aldo wins by knockout in round one, he's probably going to be on the optimal lineup. And that is probably the only way he's going to be on the optimal lineup. But unfortunately, he's fighting an opponent in Pedro Munoz who has never been finished in 24 professional fights. Does that mean he can't be finished? Of course not. I still think it's possible Jose Aldo could finish the fight, but... I'm not dying to invest in him against an opponent who's fought 24 times and has never been finished. And also, if you want to look at the metrics, Aldo's plus 405 to win inside the distance, which is really poor. So like I said at the start, if his name was not Jose Aldo and you knew that he wouldn't wrestle, wouldn't throw strikes, was fighting an opponent who is very durable and has a terrible inside distance line and might be highly owned, why would you play him? Um... He's a talented fighter. He's very technical. I'm actually going to pick him to win the fight, but it'll probably be a competitive matchup. And ultimately, I just am not willing to invest in that first round KO upside from Aldo at 8.6K. He is going to be my fade of the week. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's UFC Quick Picks. Thank you so much for the support. You can follow me on Twitter at Brad Apley, double T, double P, dailyfanmma.com for all your DraftKings breakdowns, needs, got rankings, projections, podcasts, betting content as well. And coming off two slates in a row where we've had someone take down $100,000 on DraftKings. So hopefully we can keep the ball rolling this week for UFC 265. Again, thank you, guys. Uh, best of luck out there. Stay safe, and we'll talk to you soon. Peace.